Bonjour tout le monde. Hey everyone, Katie here in the Academy. Um, just here because I want to share my thoughts on what I think is a very, very fair paper that we've seen for French this year. Um, I have a feeling we're going to have a little bit of a mixed reaction to it because some parts of it were really, really nice and other parts of it were a little bit more challenging, maybe required you to think a little bit more outside of the box, but overall I think a very fair paper, um, maybe not quite so nice as last year's paper, but let's break down um, all of these questions and see what you guys thought. So um, we know that the comprehensions are the bane of all of your lives. They are worth 30% of your final grade for your leaving cert, which is a bit um, outrageous, but I have no life, so I have actually done both of the comprehensions. So um, I kind of found that the first comprehension was the more challenging of the two, which is very, very rare. Usually we see students have a lot more difficulty with the second comprehension because it makes use of the passé sample. Um, within these, I think this first comprehension, it was more so the content of the actual comprehension itself that I thought might have pushed you guys out of your comfort zone a little bit. Um, it was speaking about different stereotypes associated with um, this girl Billy's area. Um, and I think overall the questions are quite fair. We had a lot of nice copy and paste questions, which is what we love. Um, a lot of the manipulation questions could still be copied and pasted from the text as well. Um, I think the grammar question here might have thrown a few students off. Question 3b um, says, find in the third section a verb in the present participle. Um, the answer that I've written down for that is portant. Um, that's the present participle is like the equivalent of like ing in English, um, and typically in French it ends in ant. Um, our question then we've got for question six is Billy is right to feel proud of her neighbourhood. Do you agree? Um, my answer for question six, um, and again, this is just my own answer. We don't know what the marketing scheme says yet. Um, I said, I agree. We see in section two that Billy's classmates who come from disadvantaged areas are the ones who try to distance themselves from the cliches. And then I inserted that quote from section two. Um, I also then said, we also see in section four that the majority of people from Billy's area are calm, inoffensive, intelligent and respectful. Um, and then I added in that quote from section four, um, which says, La partie calme um, et inoffensive de la banlieue où l'intelligence et le respect d'une grosse partie des banlieues arts. So that was my answer for question six. Moving into question two then, so our second comprehension. So again, I've no life, I've done the whole answer already, but um, I kind of thought that this was a way nicer comprehension for our second one than what we've seen in previous years. It's very um approachable in the sense that it just talks about probably what a lot of you guys are feeling right now um a young man having a conversation with his mother saying that he feels very frustrated because he doesn't know what he wants to do after school what he wants to do in the future and um, whereas all of his friends feel as though they've kind of got all that sorted um looking at all of this we've got say for argument say question 4a might have thrown a few of you guys off it says find the expression that means um, follow your example and the answer for that was marche don't take pas which is to walk in your steps um question six then i kind of find this not necessarily difficult but i think this is a little bit more biased or subjective and um, the question says in this extract dimitri shows a lack of maturity i think that this marketing scheme is going to be very very favorable to both sides that like once you can kind of back your own answer up it's going to be very broad um, so my answer was, I do agree, because in section two, he seems frustrated having to decide what he wants to do after school. And then I've again inserted that quote from that, um, from that section. And then my second point was that we also see in section two that he just wants to travel the world, but he also doesn't mention how he's planning on financing it. Um, and then again, I've included that um, quote from section two. You might also say as well, but we see in section three that his mum is going to pay for it for him, so on and so forth. But overall, I definitely thought that second comprehension was a lot nicer than what we've seen in previous years. Then we get on to this absolute beauty of a question 1A, um, which if you guys have done anything about like social media and its impact on young people at all, the way that we have done in grind or in day school, if you've done that in your own school, you probably would have been very able to manipulate question 1A into something that you felt quite comfortable with. Um, the question just says, in section A, question one, according to Billy, in the media, we see there that there's a lot of young people of my age drinking alcohol and um, kind of like taking drugs or fighting, um, which you don't have to mention any of that in your own answer. The actual question itself says, like Billy, do you believe that the media give a fake image to young people? So there you could talk about social media and influencers and um, you could talk about people maybe um, you can link it back into mental health that you could say that people seem happy on the media all the time, but like you never know what's going on in someone's life, whatever. Um, question 1B, this seems to be kind of their attempt at linking the oral exam into the question 1, which is what we've seen in recent years. I think the question 1B is absolutely awful. Some of you might have loved it, just not for me. 
Um, it says, according to you, what is the importance of having centres of cultural interest, which maybe some of you guys have a lot of that prepped for your oral exam already. That's definitely not something that sixth year me would have done. Um, I probably would have avoided that. And then question 1C was our story. Um, and it says, you have received a large sum of money for your 18th birthday, the dream. Um, talk about what you have done with this money, okay? Which is important that, for argument's sake, if you had written a text there saying, talking about what you are going to do, um, that's going to be seen as including somewhat irrelevant material to that as well. Um, like we know, if it's a récit or a story, it's always going to be something that's in the past. So that was question one. That's another 60 marks, which again is 15% um, of your final grade. And then in this other little beauty, we have loads of lovely choices for our second question from questions two to six. Some of you guys might have done an additional question as well. Um, our diary entry was gorgeous. It was, your cousin is going to come and live in your house because they are doing studies in your town. Um, your parents have asked you to share your bedroom with them. What do you write about this topic in your diary entry? So you could have gone very positive or very negative with that lovely kind of open-ended question. Um, our question three then was our... Um, our email, right, and we're sending an email to a friend, which is the best case scenario, like, you know, versus like a formal letter or something that could have come up instead of that. Um, and it wouldn't be a leaving sir paper if there wasn't something about a bike on it. So there was loads of questions there about bikes um, or like how you prefer to travel, whatever. Some of you might have really liked that question as well. We did think that there was going to be something about bikes on your paper this year. I was thinking more so along the lines of opinion piece, but... I thought we were going to see something about bikes or electric scooters, so thankfully we didn't see electric scooters this year, but we had that little appearance of our bikes there for question three. Now, our next prediction, our next thing that we had prepped massively both in school and in grinds was our question four, which was about the Olympic Games. Now, the answer that we had prepped was talking about how the Olympic Games um, were quite negative. I gave you guys all of that context about how unhappy um, per, um, all the Parisian people are about the Olympics happening. They think it's going to be a waste of money, whatever. And you could have still used all of that material by just kind of having a negative reaction to this question. Question four says, um, I can't wait for the Olympic Games this year. Like kind of how good is it that we get to, you know, meet up every four years for this huge international sports festival and um, give your reaction. So you could have said like, I have mixed feelings about this um, statement or something and then talked about how negative the Olympics are in particular this year for Paris. Um, so some of you probably absolutely love that. And then our last two questions, again, another thing that we talked about that could have come up in our paper this year was the environment. Um, and the question was actually very simple. It just says, unfortunately, we are all polluters. Do you agree? So very kind of nice open ended question on the environment there, which I'm sure some of you guys from day school and grinds are chuffed about. And then the last question, this is what I mean. Whoever is writing these and just thinks that this is going to help anyone. Like, why do we need two thumbs up anyway? And it's the most casual photo for then the most serious sounding question. Again, something that we spoke about a lot this year was social problems. So some of you could have really tied that into this answer as well. So underneath these two thumbs up, the question then says, despite the current situation in the world in general, with wars, famines and natural disasters, it is important to stay optimistic. What do you think about this? So if you had some nice vocab prepped on social problems there, but also maybe really wanted to talk about happiness or mental health or whatever, you could definitely tie those two things in. Um, so again, that second question is 40 marks or 10% of your leaving cert grade. So um, overall, I think quite a fair paper, maybe not as nice as last year's paper, but definitely something that I think the marking scheme is going to work quite well for you guys with. Um, but yeah, let us know what you guys thought about them below in the comments and best of luck with the rest of your exams. Au revoir.